Hey everybody, Bezad here, and today I've got the big boss, Brandon Sparrow, and we're gonna have a a little chat. I mean, it's been a while since we've even been uh, in the same room together. Um, so let's let's just talk about uh, what's been going on in Naked and Famous Denim World. What uh, you know, it's 2020, so much stuff going on, and let's talk about all of our our favorite things this year. Let's talk about pants. Yeah, let's talk about pants. <laughs> um, but before we talk about pants, what's what's been going on with you, Brandon? Oh, everything is pretty good over here. Um, you know, we've been pretty fortunate, thank God. And uh, I mean, we've been doing uh, one thing that's pretty cool, actually, aside from pants, is that we have a crazy van going on. Right. Uh, I mean, these guys contacted you. There's a company called Vivid Vans. Well, wait, wait, let's back it up for a back second. Back it up? Let's back it up for a second. So, I obviously know about this project. We haven't announced this project to anybody yet. So, what is. What is basically the, the point of this project, Brandon? I mean, this is, we're going to make a crazy raw denim van. That's right. A raw denim... Or a raw denim truck, truck. I should say, yeah. So, where did you get the truck? I imported the truck from Japan, from a seller there. Like, we found it in, a, like, a sales yard there. And uh, there's companies that specialize in, import, in exporting and importing them. You gotta explain the truck a little bit. Because, you know, so people what, in North America, yeah. they think truck, they think, you know, F-150, big truck. Absolutely. This is a, this is a okay. K-Tora. So it's uh, basically it's a Japanese mini truck. It only has a 660 cc engine. It's like a 45 horsepower little miniature truck. Uh, like we've been going to Japan now for 13 years, twice a year, and every time I go, and since the first time, I'm like, wow, what is that cute little truck going down the road? And you know, we have nothing like it here. Um, and so I just always was so I don't know, I guess jealous, and I always wanted to import one and bring one in uh, to like be you know, there's so few of them here. Uh, so we, yeah, we finally did it, and it's a 1990 Daihatsu High Jet Jumbo. Uh, which is awesome that it's called Jumbo because it's the tiniest little thing. But we got the one with the extended cab in the back, so you can actually recline the seat. I'm six feet tall, so it's be, we'll be. So, good I mean, to have you a really back. researched this van. Oh, like, oh man, I was looking at auctions and like yard sites in Japan for over a year, uh, almost every day, looking for like the right one. I wanted all-wheel drive and the Jumbo model yeah. and uh, you know all the little things. So, anyways. You imported it here, so we, yeah. we, we boated that thing over, yep. uh, we, we got it back to Montreal, and I forget how Vivid Vans contacted us. They, it was for, they, they emailed oh, you. You know what? I think they asked us for some denim because yes. they wanted to do some kind of upholstery pro project and together, and I was like, you know what? I have a better idea because I knew you just got this van. It was just a perfect coincidence. So we, we did this introduction. So. Vivid Van, they deck out retro vans in yeah. such a like a manly, like badass, kick-ass kind of way. I'll put a link in the description, everything. You, you're going to follow them. You'll follow them on Instagram. you got to check them out. But uh, what are we doing to your van? Uh, all right. So, I mean, we're going to do, I think we're using the 18-ounce Big Slub Selvage Denim that we've used so many times since first ever season, by the way. That was a first season style. Um, and this lo lovely, slubby, amazing denim we're going to do for the whole headliner uh, of it, uh, of, the, of the truck. Uh, and uh, also all of the carpets will be in it. Then we're going to use the same uh, natural vegetable tan leather that we use for leather patches. Uh, I mean, there's different weights of it, but we're, yep. so we're going to use one that will be suitable for upholstery and do both chairs, oh, uh, both, wow. both seats fully in it. Uh, and the, uh, the, the doors and uh, the uh, shifter and, and, and like shift bag right. uh, will be fully in natural vegetable tan leather. I'm excited for that because that's really gonna age also. Uh, you know, all the blue from your jeans will get sure. all over it. We've done a couple seats for our retail store here. Uh, Garrett, our, uh, our video man number two, is currently sitting on a, a seat with a natural vegetable tan uh, upholstery. Right, and uh, so color-wise. Color. Yeah, oh, okay, so and one of the coolest parts is, this was Vivid Van's idea, is they're going to make a denim uh, uh, paint job, and when you when people think of that, they hear like they think of like a sticker or like yeah. it's gonna have like. But this has nothing to do with that. They're going to make an indigo paint job that fades just like jeans fade. So they're basically doing this experimental paint job where uh, the the, den the truck itself comes white. They're actually only available in in white, and they're going to paint it in uh, in like lots of different shades of blue. So they'll go like a lighter shade of blue, then a darker blue, then darker blue, darker blue. And eventually they'll get to like a really dark indigo outside. So as the, you know, you use the truck and it scratches and it, you like, you get rubbed up on stuff and you're carrying shit in the back. Um, it's gonna like fade away and reveal the, the like the layers will peel off just like they do on your dark indigo jeans. That's pretty, pretty awesome. For, yeah. so, I mean like, 
you, again, we, you know, you, I've even seen in Japan, like, denim-themed color cars, but, like, this is a car that fades like blue jeans. That's, that's the world's Yeah, exactly. First. That's, that's yeah. what's never been done before. Like, yeah. I think Levi's ha- has done collabos with certain companies and d- done, like, denim, denim seats upholstery and That's why I didn't yeah. want to do the denim upholstery. We, did, right. we, we took mm-hmm. the selvage denim for the headliner mm-hmm. and the carpet, but then we did natural uh, vegetable that's fantastic. Uh, seats. But, yeah, the paint is what's crazy. <laughs> The, the wheels are really crazy, too. They're, they claim to be the first ever three-piece wheels. They're Japanese wheels called Speed Stars. Um, now I forget the model, the MK1 or something like that. Uh, maybe that, that, that might be wrong. But, uh, yeah, they're the first ever. They're tiny little 15-inch uh, wheels, though, but three-piecers. Um, and the rumor is that they're the first ever three-piecers. Uh, what else do we have going? So um, Well, yeah, well, we're going to have to... I know they sent a couple of like uh, uh, photos of them working on it, but yeah, we're, yeah. we're definitely gonna have to get some more because I'm sure the audience here is gonna want to see some of these uh, some of these images. So for the undercarriage for the frame, uh, you know, we wanted to kind of put like a hint of red in there somewhere, kind of like a uh, like, like a salvage a, idea. Yeah, exactly, like a yeah. salvage idea, like a little secret handshake of it. So the under frame is gonna be red. So you'll only if you kind of like really paying attention and kind of look low, will you see like That's a red awesome. salvage kind of uh, ID. Do, uh, do we truck. have uh, an ETA on when this is gonna be ready? Man, I hope soon. It's been we. I shipped them like in March, which right. is like the craziest time. Right. Uh, uh, so you know uh, they've been quite busy and uh, such. But man, I, I hope it'll be ready in the next month or so. Okay, it and- might be ready before the end of the year. Vivid Vans, what do you think? <laughs> right. I don't know. Well, when inevitably, when customers ask when they can buy one, uh, when is that going to happen, Brandon? Oh, when they can buy the truck? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. You got to ask Vivid Vans. That, oh, right. man, they are usually pretty busy. Right. They do like mostly 70s vans, like uh, Volkswagen stuff, uh, all-wheel drive stuff, um, synchro vans. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's all like 80s retro style. Uh, anyways, they, they have like a cool horror, like aesthetic to them that's why i really i mean you know i'm a horror movie guy i love that kind of stuff so i i was really you know when i saw what they did i was like this is really really cool yeah, the, um the owner is this six foot eight like super cool dude tattooed yeah. all over uh and where's our he's wearing our dragon ball z he's wearing the cell jeans that's now. awesome and like beating the yeah. shit out of them pretty good we got to get like a fade picture right we're gonna have to we're gonna have to exchange some photos there uh with the guys at vivid bent anyways i'll i'll put a link to the description and they're in in I'll put a link in the description for all their stuff. You can follow them, follow them on Instagram. And uh, I don't know, if I get a clip, I'm going to throw the clip into this video and you guys can see uh, what's going on with that van. So uh, that's some pretty exciting stuff yeah, going on Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a fun, naked, yeah. famous denim van. All right. Um, so let's swing on to, or well, swing, I don't know, let's uh, change topics. Um, so 2020, we're, we're approaching the end of 2020. So this is going to be a little bit of a recap of what's been going on uh, throughout the year. And I wanted to talk about our favorite jeans of the year. We release so many jeans every year and I'm constantly asked by the audience, like, what are my favorite jeans? And that is kind of like, uh, it's every every month it's kind of something else. But uh, I think I narrowed it down to, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to this list for, this is my 2020 favorite list. You've got a couple of favorites. Yeah, we're doing three each. We're doing three, three each. each. Okay, so what do you, what do you got? What's your, what's, and, and do you have uh, a particular order? Okay, no, we're going no particular okay. order then. Because uh, I already did a video on these, so I'll save these ones first. You have that, like the MIJ8 jeans right. that come in the box. I mean, they're just so special, so crazy. They were quite expensive, but because they're so insane, hand dyed in natural indigo, not just natural indigo, but natural indigo grown in Japan, not in India or other places. Uh, comes in this, uh, you know, Canadian pine box, which is which was really beautiful. All, uh, all slotted construction, no um, no nails or screws. So basically, we we made the most difficult yeah. to make product ever the <laughs> the guy who makes it is like um you know is this old guy and the method has been passed down from generation to generation so it's called the tokushima hand dyed natural indigo intangible cultural treasure selvage denim right <laughs> not only the most difficult it's also the longest i think it's the longest name of any product we've oh, ever yes. put out oh yes was that on purpose brandon oh, of course it was on purpose absolutely on we, purpose. We li- if you haven't <laughs> noticed if you haven't noticed we like superlatives here <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's go over some of the details on this one again. So you've got that super textured denim. How does that come about? Uh, so the, the the texture uh, is is one because of the slubbiness of, of the yarn. Uh, and if you remember, years ago we made a, also a hand dyed natural indigo jean, but it was quite flat. So this time we wanted to go uh, and like upgrade it mm-hmm. and have uh, use a slubby yarn. But also you get this kind of like wrinkliness because these are tempi treated too. And you get the million different blues in it because of the natural indigo and because of the dye method. Right. They, they dye this in, in a hank, um, which is like this big swirling um, 
bunch of yarn and it's all dipped by hand into the bath of, of natural indigo and pulled out on that dry and dip and pull out on that dry and so it oxidizes at different levels the oxygen obviously hits the outside more than it hits the uh, inside of the yarn and so you have the dye oxidizing and changing colors at different rates and so it's how you get this kind of like rainbow of blues um, all built into it right and uh, we only made about a hundred pairs of these so this is not the rarest pair of jeans we've ever made but Definitely one of the rarest yeah, pairs. It's, yeah, it's pretty rare. Yeah. It's, it's, I, it's pretty limited. We actually wanted to make more, but yeah. they just short shipped us on the fabric because they just couldn't, make, couldn't make any enough. more at the time. Yeah. Uh, we, do, we did a cordovan patch on, on these Ex also. Explain what that cordovan is. Cordovan is like... Uh, is one of the top top tops for like you know leather nerds it is um it, it's horse leather and it's from the uh the butt of the horse which is not like the rump it's not the it's not the tussie it's the uh, <laughs> uh my kid likes that word yeah. uh but uh it's like the upper thigh of uh, of the uh, of the horse there's two of them obviously one on each side they only come about this big i actually have one it's here it's smaller in the other room. than that actually I, in the video yeah. you did a big yeah. oval i'm like yeah it's okay yeah much smaller yeah they, they vary obviously but they come about like approximately this uh this size and and what, what, one reason that they're uh, loved so much is that they're able to be shined up uh, so well. Like even without the use of all these different chemicals, they can shine up and you can kind of see the shine. A lot of high-end shoe and boot companies uh, use this leather, uh, but very few people use it for like a leather patch. Yeah, so. for a pair of jeans that you're uh, going to wash over and over. It is... But definitely, is that the most expensive leather patch we put on a jean? Yes. This is yeah. more expensive than when we do ostrich skin, eel skin. We've done crocodile patches that yeah. were le um, less expensive right. than, than this. I see television commercials for like big box stores, you know, selling jeans. And I know the cost of this leather patch. And I know that the cost of the leather patch alone is more than the retail price of jeans that they're selling in like these, you know, mass market yeah, nonsense yeah. stores. Well, I see commercials for yeah. uh, some of the stuff like, yeah, this leather patch costs more right. than that pair of jeans probably. Um, yeah, and uh, we have uh, hidden rivets on these. I mean, we have all the similar, uh, like, made in Japan uh, stuff. Oh, we should mention this was this one was made in Japan, right. in case you didn't see the video. You got the selvage fly with this badass little, uh, like, pink selvage ID color. And you got the full iron buttons as well. Yeah, oh yes, that's right. Uh, we should have taken a magnet out to show, uh, but the buttons are 100% iron, and even the back of the buttons are 100% iron. The rivets are real copper, so they'll oxidize right. over time. Yeah, so change. not only do your jeans oxidize, but your hardware, also ox like sorry not only do your jeans fade yeah. but your hardware also oxidizes and fades over time exactly. as well exactly usually it's just the denim and the leather patch right. that kind of like age you know denim and leather it's our two favorite materials the two materials that the more you beat the shit out of them the more beautiful they become that's why we love them so here we take it to the next level and we do 100% iron uh, and 100% copper uh, instead of just like a normal nickel alloy uh, that that not, that it normally is right well y your favorite gene of the year is uh is it the most expensive jean of the year? I think it is. I think so. Uh, so, I mean, that's a great choice. It's not something that everybody can have. There's, I mean, you know, they were very limited and they, they sold out pretty quickly. So, uh, I, there might be a couple of uh, pieces out there in the world. Uh, but uh, in case you, you can't get Brandon's, maybe, I don't know if it's your number one pick, one of your number one picks. Um, my favorite jean of the year uh, well, one of them, there's a couple, I got a pile over here, was the Toxic Avenger jean. Yeah, I love and, these. And so, for those who know me well, I love horror movies, I love B-movies, and perhaps my favorite B-movie of all time is The Toxic Avenger. So being able to work with Troma, and Troma is the, is the, uh, is, is the uh, uh, production company that produced the, the, the film, The Toxic Avenger. They are an independent company like us. They've been independent, uh, in, independently making films for, I think, 46 years now. And uh, the owner, Lloyd Kaufman, he's, he's insane. He directed this film along with Michael Hertz. And uh, reaching out to them, they were like so accommodating. And they, oh, yeah. they, they, they were just, whatever we wanted to do, they let us do. So we got to create this really, really cool gene. And for those who don't know what the talk of Toxic Avenger is, he's a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. <laughs> Uh, he's, he, he was, you know, your average nerd that uh, got into an unfortunate toxic, uh, toxic waste accident and became a superhero. But what, like, we, we really incorporated all of, you know, what made the Toxic Avenger, the character, uh, special into this gene. So because he's a hideously deformed creature, we made a hideously deformed denim. So it's a left-hand twill, right-hand twill, broken twill, triple alternating twill denim with a big slub yarn. So you get a crazy texture at the same time all using organic cotton because the story of the Toxic Avenger is, you know, it is a crazy B-movie horror, you know, comedy horror film. 
it does have an environmental message at the at the core. And then when you go on to watch shows like The Toxic Crusader, which was the uh, G-rated version c children's cartoon uh, show, which they ba made based off of the R-rated adult uh, film, uh, which uh, the 80s, I mean, what can you say? Um, you know, that was a very environmentally themed show as well. So we, we threw in the organic cotton. Um, you've got the, the, the kind of toxic colored green weft because toxic is kind of green. So... A, a lot of really, really cool features in there. You've got Toxie on the back. You've got this really cool leather patch with uh, with uh, Toxie here. And that was from their Marvel... It was a, a cover of a Marvel Comics uh, version of the Toxic Avenger. So, you know, we've got the Marvel comic books. We've got the movie. We've got uh, Toxic Crusaders. You've got the holofoil uh, flasher with Toxie uh, with uh, his girlfriend. And Toxic Avenger 2, he goes to Japan. So this is actually the cover, uh, the, the, the film poster for uh, Toxic Avenger Part 2. Just so much stuff. And then on top of that, we got to make the jacket, which right here I think is super cool. You've got that chenille embroidery. You know, super plush, you know, I've been traumatized, you know, being part of the, you know, it's kind of like a trauma team jacket in my opinion. And uh, if you, if you're a fan of horror and like cult horror, or if you just like crazy weird stuff or, 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 or loud things, like I am, I, I'm, this is the jacket, <clears throat> denim jacket that I've been wearing the most this year. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we got to do a collaboration with one of my favorite films ever. And, you know, nowadays we've been doing these kind of film tie-ins you know we've done ghostbusters right we've got a couple of film tie-ins coming up next year um let's skip to some next year topics sure because i think you know the the next topic is like we've got uh, a couple of film tie-ins horror ones again um one of them we wanted to do this year but it kind of got delayed so uh we're working on a friday the 13th yep. and nightmare on elm street uh capsule collection yeah so uh, we were uh, originally one was going to be uh, released this fall, and then we would do the other one next fall. But anyway, that well, that's because this year had a Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, but uh, oh, I think next year also has a. Friday I'm sure the every 13th. year has one, but I mean, you know, this year got things things happened. Anyways, <laughs> things happen. Uh, things happen this year, <laughs> and uh, it kind of slowed some some projects down. But next year we've got the the double. Uh, a horror. I mean, it's, we've got the heavyweights of horror right yeah. there. Jason Voorhees and uh, Freddy, Freddy Krueger. We'll do a double Halloween release. Yeah, so that's going to be really big. So I'm, I'm excited. More movie stuff. I'm a movie guy. I've said that a million times already. So the more movie stuff we can do, the better. Okay, okay. so that's a, a little bit of future preview that's, for that's you. Special preview, uh, yes. And uh, okay, let's let's check okay, out your keep, next keep selection going here. With, with jeans, we did one. So here's the number two that I that I really love was our real gold selvage. I love when we could do crazy shit, and this one was definitely crazy. And it was not just that we adorned the jeans in gold because the buttons are 24 karat gold plated, the rivets are 24 karat gold plated, all done from uh, YKK, which is like one of the biggest suppliers of, of buttons. Actually, a Japanese owned company. Uh, and yeah, they, they actually got to custom make our buttons in um, full gold plating, but the actual denim itself has real gold yarn in it. Uh, I thought that's so, pretty cool. And, and the selvage ID. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So along the selvage edge, you have real gold yarn, uh, and you it's can not see just it. like a metallic yarn. No, it's exactly. actually gold. Yeah, it's not gold yeah. color, but real gold yeah. metal. It's actually the second time ever that we've incorporated metal into jeans. Remember yeah. when we right. did it before? We did a stainless steel denim. Dude, that was like maybe more than ten years ago. We did a jean with stainless steel. I think it had maybe ten percent. Yeah, or, they were quite fifteen percent. They got really crinkly. Right. Yeah, you you could crinkle them. And they would hold. Yeah. Yeah. It was the same material that they had used to make fencing um, uh, outfits with. Right. Uh, and, and we, so this is actually the second time that we've used to make metal. But by, by the way, do you remember the retail price of those stainless steel jeans? Probably, <laughs> they were like three to four hundred dollars. Four hundred and twenty. Yeah, there you go. Four hundred twenty dollars. All right. <laughs> we live I'm, in Canada, by the way. Yes. Um, <laughs> And yes, you, guys, so, you guys should know that. Yeah, so these are pretty <laughs> awesome. You got you got the gold uh, uh, patch over there. We uh, these were pretty high in demand, so I think we're actually gonna make a second production of these. Right. Um, so yeah, you can look out if if you guys miss them the first time. We'll definitely uh, have these available again. Okay. So, gold. What's after gold, Brandon? Oh man. Okay. They said wants to make platinum jeans. So while in Japan, <laughs> um, we were meeting with one of our suppliers, and he showed us real platinum yarn and it was like wait a minute we can make denim from this he's like <laughs> technically you can make denim from this and we were what would the retail be brandon 
Oh, uh, I think around twelve thousand. Twelve thousand yeah. dollars for the. Uh, we're not necessarily doing this. Okay, this, this is just a uh, hypothesis. Leave a comment <laughs> in the comment section below if you would buy the real platinum. It's like it's platinum weft. Yeah, it would be so dark, dark indigo. Dark outside, indigo warp. Platinum weft. Full platinum yarn weft. Yeah, the retail would be around twelve thousand dollars. If you got a Probably. rich uncle or something, <laughs> um, you know, maybe we'll custom make him a pair. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, Brandon's a little hesitant I'm, to I'm make hesitant. these. Yeah, I'm hesitant. <laughs> Maybe if we can get uh, 10 meters, we'll make four pairs. Right. So we'll, we'll see. So, uh, that, anyways, that's kind of part of the fun of you know, having this job is that we get to... You know, it's not just regular denim we're making oh, no. all the time. So we get to have a lot of fun and we get to create, well, ridiculous things sometimes. Just because it, half the time it's just amusing for us. Yeah, well, yeah. I also love how we just happenstance upon crazy stuff right. sometimes. It happens to us. But like people don't realize the like the design process. They think that uh, it's like often just like sitting there and like drawing something out. But sometimes it's just us going to Japan and finding stuff like that, or and having discussions. Yeah. Uh, one time, Bezet and I were sitting in a meeting and the coffee. Yeah, they, yeah. All, they, they they in Japan they're always so polite and they bring you a tea or they bring you a coffee every time. And uh, we were at a meeting talking about actually prepare for dye denims. It's called PFD denim. And uh, you know, oh, what can we dye on this? And we we've done pomegranate we did the, before. Like, we, we've well, done the this, chi that. right, and, and and our chino twills. Yes. Yeah. So that was like a, a the base was always the same, and we would always just yeah. change the color and then change the yeah. color. And we also had we did different natural dyes this and that, and we we're just talking about what we could do. And Bezad goes to reach over and says, oh, uh, can we do? Let's let me see this fabric and knocks over his coffee all over a PFD swatch. Like all that, over the that, swatch that had, table, like messing up the table. The, uh, we're <laughs> we're uh, like totally embarrassing. <laughs> Uh, but then, we, you know, of course... As we're so, cleaning it up, I'm like, uh, don't worry, don't worry. Oh, it's uh, coffee dye Coffee denim. dye, coffee dye. <laughs> and then he says, oh, you want? And, no. we're, and we're like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, we no. can do it. No, no, no. It didn't go like that. It was... I was like, oh, it's coffee dyed. And then it was like a eureka moment. And I was like, can we do it? And right. they're like, wait a minute. Can we do it? So immediately they got on the phone and they started calling people. And then it was like this back and forth of them calling different dye houses trying to figure it out. And they're like... Yeah, we think we could do yeah, it. Yeah, we, like, we could. We could do it. Let's right, go. Right, so let's do it. So we we did do an actual coffee dyed denim, and we made something like three hundred pairs. That was that was a couple years ago, but yeah, f maybe yeah, six, seven, eight years ago already. So now. yeah, Man, I mean, time goes fast. Some of it is like yeah, we just it just happens. You know, it's not uh, it's not always a pre planned process. Sometimes we have ideas, and that well, well, oftentimes you have ideas that are pre planned, but uh, there's so often something just happens and, and, it, and it gets created show your, right. uh, show your next one yeah. yeah so the next one i sorry i ramble a lot you guys you guys know that too uh the true grit selvage this is the denim that i've been wearing uh, the jeans that i've been wearing the most this year and uh i've actually faded them out quite beautifully so 15 ounce unsamphrized great it's got a really fantastic gritty texture to it that's why we called it the true grit and what makes Okay, two things really make this special. The first thing that makes it stand out the most is the natural brown colored weft. So it's a natural brown cotton. Uh, this is not dyed. This is actually grown this way. And this is for, this will lead into some future uh, uh, production as well. Oh, yeah. But this is an American grown cotton called uh, Fox Fiber. And it's, it's so beautiful because you don't have to dye this cotton. It has this natural warm tone to it. And when you look at this fabric, when you, especially when you look at it up close, you can see that warmness coming through the front grain of the fabric, and then it adds a nice warm, like a beautiful warmness to this denim. So uh, I've really enjoyed wearing it. We've got the hair on hide, uh, leather patch as well, and over time this starts to fade away and the hair comes out, and so it's just a really beautiful, evolving pair of jeans, just like everything else, but you know, you've got that great texture, you've got that warm tone, you've got a natural brown cotton, American grown cotton, you've got the hair on hide patch. I think it's a really beautiful combination of things. I've really enjoyed wearing this uh, this year and- Definitely a good fader. Definitely a good fader. I've s recently switched to the solid black selvage uh, because I wanted to enter the Indigo Invitational uh, Denim Fade Contest. Uh, I wanted to do it a little unorthodoxly and uh, instead of doing indigo, do black and uh, represent black denim uh, for the competition. Anyways, they're, they're coming along. I've been wearing these for about two months now. Maybe three, I don't remember. October, November. Yeah, any, two, two, two months. Under three. Uh, yeah. Under three months. So uh, anyways, that's that. Um, and I've got another another favorite just because I, I, I brought more uh, toys than you. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the other one Garrett oh, yeah, is wearing. Right, right, Garrett's wearing. So we'll, we'll go to this one, and then we'll go, we'll go into the next one. So the tatami denim. 
I'm which grab one. which really isn't denim at all. Um, it's this is uh, a basically the denim version of traditional Japanese floor mats. So, you know, again. I live in Japan now, but we've been going to Japan for 13 years, and there's just so much that we we pull in from the culture that that gets injected into the products that we make, and you know, making some of these unorthodox fabrics and making them into jeans. You know, some people are like, "Who is that even for?" I'm like, "It's for weirdos who <laughs> like weird fabrics like us." Like, you know, I, I do find it funny that people like judge in a way. Dude, weirdos and, is the best. I'm like. We're, yeah, exactly. Would you, it's, it's, would you rather be ordinary or extraordinary? Absolutely. I'd be, I, I want to be extraordinary. I want to have things that are, speak to me. And when we make something like this, it's not for everybody. And, you know, there's people who appreciate it and they're like, okay, I like it. Maybe I wouldn't wear it. But the, the, for the people who wear it, this speaks to them in such a way. They're like, this is what I've been looking for. It, it, it helps me express myself. And that's really why I love this yeah, fabric. There's so much boring sameness out there. So it, it, like we have to. We're, we're here to create. We're here to make fun shit. So yeah. So to, 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 to Tommy, Tommy Denim. Denim yeah. That's the way to do it. All right. You want to go to your next one, Brandon? Oh, no. I just oh, brought oh, this. Right. Yeah, I just brought this because we were talking about the uh, Cordovan 4 and we were talking about the size. So this is an example of a piece of Cordovan. Uh, and you can see the back. So it, and it's specifically shell Cordovan. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to show yeah, that. So it's, it's, yeah, it's not humongous. No, exactly. Like, how many leather patches do we get out of that? Oh, yeah. Um, maybe you can get, like, 13 leather patches out of this or right. something. So not very many. Yeah, it's quite, it's, it's quite expensive. Right. Quite beautiful, though. And, uh, yeah, this, well, this, yeah. Is, this is a blue one, yeah. uh, like an indigo-colored one. Looks we, like it's been we, sitting in the sun it. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was under my neon lights, so, like, I had a paper here, and it, it kind of, yeah. Anyways, well, it'll okay. be... Uh, the top one. I flipped it now. <laughs> okay. All right, let's go to your... Is this your number one favorite? I think or? it's not just my number one favorite of the year. It's probably my number one favorite of all time. Okay. Like, people used to ask me, like, what is the, cr- not like what is the craziest, but what is your favorite jean that you ever did? And it's not necessarily my favorite to wear that I personally wear, but, you know, I, I initially would say the 32-ounce denim jeans because they were the heaviest pair of jeans ever produced. And, like, we didn't just make one of these. We made hundreds of these and sold them. Um... And so, like, for me, it goes even past denim. It's like a marvel of engineering that we were able to produce these. And so I'm so proud of them. You know, we, we always joke and say that uh, uh, 32 ounce, the heaviest pair of jeans uh, ever in the world. Like, guaranteed three uncom- pairs of jeans at the same time. Guaranteed, guaranteed uncomfortable, uncomfortable. your money back. Or your money back. Yeah, exactly. Try to think so, that up. <laughs> yeah. So now we have gone even farther than that. And we've taken it to the next level and made uh, a pair. We've, we've, so far, we've only made one pair, but uh, it's kind of our proof of concept. Uh, we have more denim and will make more, but we have made a 40 ounce denim jean, which is quite insane. Yes. Um, and uh, Garrett, our, uh, our fantastic uh, videographer uh, right now, yeah. is wearing them. Here, I'm going to switch camera. I'm going to take the camera. I want to I wanna show, uh, I wanna show uh, these off. All right, Garrett, time to model. There we go. Tell them and th- they're just so insane. And our, uh, you know, our factory manager was just like, also, it's kind of like crazy like us and loves to make crazy stuff. And just look at how thick and amazing it is. And it's not just that it's so heavy. It's actually really beautiful also. Uh, and just because like, maybe because it's just really this beautiful Japanese denim that's magnified. Uh, you can already see it fading here. We, we had a custom uh, button made. They're actually, the button was actually made by our friends at Miansai, which is a brand of jewelry in Miami. And they custom casted the, the button for us. So uh, shout out to, to Tier at, at Mansai and, uh, and Michael at Mansai. Thank you guys. Uh, and Jose at Mansai. Uh, and uh, yeah, also real copper rivets. And it just, it was so difficult to make. I, I had to buy uh, a $3,000 sewing machine and custom, uh, uh, do custom adaptions to it just to uh, make this, uh, uh, you know, just to make this jean. And it, it's just such a marvel. It's, it's so incredible. If you turn around also and show off that leather patch, we put, two, normally for the 32 ounce denim jeans, we put a 15 ounce le- uh, leather patch on it, which is like, Damn, it's like six millimeters thick. So here we put two of them, sewed it together, and normally we sew it together with like a, a nice thick wax nylon thread. Here we use real sinew, and sinew is like uh, elk or deer tendon. It's, it's either like, like tendon from the leg or back tendon, uh, and uh, it's been used by uh, you know First Peoples, uh, Native Americans, and Native Canadians for like you know many many years uh, uh, to sew stuff with. And the guy who sews our all of our like leather goods, like all of our Cordovan uh, wallets and stuff, so them all by hand in in Toronto. Uh, 
we sent him the jeans and he sewed all, all these on by hand. I mean, he's a real artist and like, he's, he's a real leather artist. He does like actually leather costumes also. Like this guy's amazing and has sat down in powwows with uh, First Nations peoples and like learned how to use sinew, learned how, how to do these things. We're really proud to, su to support them and buy stuff uh, from them too. Uh, so uh, there's just so many good stories with this denim. It's so crunchy. It's so amazing. It's so thick. It can stand up on its own. And yeah, I, I don't know if we'll ever be able to do heavier. Uh, we'll certainly try, but this is just a monster beast that is one of the greatest things I've ever created in my life. All right. Well, here, let's switch it up. <laughs> I'll I actually have a piece of sinew. Just for fun? Yeah, this, All is, right. this is a piece. This is a piece of sinew. Yeah. Uh, and so this is, we, we it, it's pretty cool because we actually use this to sew, um, sew that leather patch. And you can see here, it's some elk tendon. They have to sew it wet uh, and uh, yeah, they, they, he wets it, he kind of like strips it. And then when he sews it, he sews it wet, it leaves a little bit of room and it shrinks right. uh, wh while it dries. So you really have to know what you're doing to be able to sew with this. But yeah, this is what the leather patches are right. sewn with. So uh, I remember when we saw the first, like we were in a, a production meeting with the, with, oh, the, yeah. with, the, with the mill and they're like, we have something for you. <laughs> <laughs> and because we've been working on this with them forever. like. Ever since the 32 ounce, pretty much every production meeting I'd go into, I'd be like, okay, so uh, when are we doing heavier? When are we doing heavier? Yeah. And it was just, you know, anyways, we finally got to that point and they show us the fabric and they're like, We're, we've got it for you. Like, we've, do we've done it. And like, even before that, we've been, just been talking to them about the processes and like all, like, anyways, they're going on about machinery and stuff and like, there's all kinds of custom stuff going on that they've actually told us not to tell anybody. Right. Like, they were like, this is top. Oh, like, yeah. They showed us the machine and they're like, this is top secret. There's, like, there's, you, there's trade secrets yeah. here, it's true. So, like, as much as I want to talk about like how crazy that machine is, all I can say is, is that it is insane. It's, 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 it's huge. And it's insane. Yeah. But anyways, it made this fabric and like it was me, you and Risa and we're sitting in Okayama and we're in that little room and they show us the fabric and we're like, this makes the 20 ounce look like yeah. lightweight. Like yeah. we're, we're in a, in the car, we're going for Udon as we often do. Oh, yes. And we were just all like, this makes what people consider heavyweight look like normal stuff you could tell right yeah. away i don't know if we ever showed we, a picture we have a picture of the yeah. 32 ounce jeans sitting next to a pair of the 40 ounce yeah. folded and it even makes the 32 ounce seem light yeah you have to figure also if it's eight ounce yeah. difference it's like the difference between an 18 ounce denim and a 10 ounce denim is such a massive world right uh so yeah it's really it's quite remarkable so the 40 ounce anyways people are going to ask us when these are going to be available i've always been telling people TBD because there's still a lot of like Garrett right now is wearing them in and we're going to work out the kinks yeah. and, and stuff like that. So um, he's presently in uh, in testing mode for all that. And once we figured out all of that stuff, we're going to have uh, some production yeah. ready on that 40 ounce. So we'll make, we'll make a second sample soon and then we'll have much more details. Right. So uh, anyways, I don't know what happened. We got some technical difficulties there. We're going to figure it out. Uh, thanks for thanks for sticking around regardless. Um, we still got a little bit more stuff to talk about, and uh, as we go into 2021, we've got, uh, as usual, lots of great things planned. Oh, yes. Um, I want to talk about the gene so far for 2021 I'm most excited for, uh, and that is, again, more tie-in stuff, just because I, I love this stuff, because we get to... We get to Walk down memory lane and do all of our yes. our uh, nostalgia trips. And for here, you you carry that nostalgia okay. pieces. Right. So we've got uh, the Joker yeah. from the Batman collection. So the Batman collection started shipping uh, just recently, and we're, we have two releases in spring in uh, in the spring summer of twenty one. So right in the new year, we'll have uh, the Batman Cape Crusader, and then the final release is the Joker Clown Prince of Crime Salvage, Brandon. Tell us about this fabric. Oh uh, yeah, so this is a indigo by purple, and we have, it's obviously have the Joker purple. It's this fabric is really cool because it's made on uh, one, uh, on the jacquard loom, 
And this Jacquard Selvage Loom is a special loom, and the like of all of the mills in Japan, we've only found like one or two mills that have it, and they only have a few of these machines. And you've seen it before, like on our vulgar uh, denim jeans, uh, and it has the ability to jacquard uh, all th this text in. So this is not embroidered after, this is not printed. Uh, all of this uh, insignia here, the ha 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 from the Joker, is all woven into the denim while it's, it's woven. We have the, the Joker green Selvage Edge to go with it. Um, yeah, so I think it's pretty badass. Uh, it should fade really interestingly too, oh, yeah. and, and and rip away inter interesting. You know, like at the, at the back uh, of the pocket seams, where you know you uh, usually get pretty good abrasion. You'll have the purple yarns poke out. Yeah. You've got the Joker logo <clears throat> on the button, and oh, uh, yes. I mean, we did. This is kind of themed off of Killing Joke, which I think is it maybe it, it's it's right. It's pretty badass. Yeah, the artwork uh, on the patch is the Killing Joke. Like, I love that leather patch, that Killing Joke leather patch. We've got the Joker embroidery here. And you gotta show the back. The back on the jacket. Here's, here's the Chanel. You know, I love these, I love these like really, really, you know, uh, uh, fun jackets, uh, you know, with the Toxic Avenger, Ghostbusters. We're doing it again with uh, the Joker here. You've got this great image here with Joker. You've got the uh, little tear. He's got, got Batman, Batman in the, eye, the bat, yeah. uh, bat signal here as well. So uh, this will be available also without the patch for those people who, who don't want to be quite as uh, as flamboyant as I, I like to be with my denim jackets. Uh, so this will come in two uh, editions uh, and that's going to be available in 2021. We've got... Uh, Fe February. Right. February 2021, we've got... Well, right now, uh, spring summer 21 is gonna start shipping soon. I'm actually gonna put out a spring summer 21 full video um, where you'll you'll be able to preview the entire collection. So you know, you guys, uh, when when you watch that video, let me know what you guys are most excited for. And uh, we're soon gonna be showing off fall winter 21. Uh, so in the coming days, so you, you guys will probably see some previews of that that Brandon won't want me to show you, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna show it to you anyways. That's, that's not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not ready yet, no. but in, in the coming weeks, uh, we'll, you'll, you'll start to see some teasers. Um, and uh, I guess that's it for just kind of denim talk, but uh, just maybe uh, this is the year end wrap up. So I, I just want to take a minute to to, to thank, well, all of our viewers. And, yeah. um, thank the fans, thank the customers, thank the retailers. The, yeah, the suppliers, everybody. Everybody. It's been a, a hard year. I, I don't want to get on a depressing note, but I know it's been a hard year for everybody. And, you know, support for us, you know, we I really greatly appreciate it. And it's not just buying a pair of jeans or anything like that. You know, it's a, a like on our on our Instagram. It's, you know, watching these videos. All, anything that you do, telling a friend about us, all that stuff helps us out in in more ways than you can imagine. And the same thing goes for all of our retail partners. If there's a place that you love that carries Thinking Famous Denim, tell your friends. You know, tell your family. You know, follow them on social. It's, it's. I don't know. It's, it, it's a way. You might not think it's that big, but it actually is a big thing. You know, we on our on our YouTube, we just surpassed. 5,100 subscribers. I think we started the year at 2,000. So uh, our, our YouTube channel is growing. Thanks so much to all you guys who, who like watching me talk for an hour about jeans. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I'll, and and of course, are sad that he's missing his fantastic mustache. Yeah, I'll, it'll, it'll come back. It's a, it's a spring mustache. Um, but uh, anyways, I wanted to thank everybody. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll we'll be able to come out to the stores and do events with you guys again soon. I know you know we want to go to New York. We'll go to yeah. Seattle. We'll go to California. We'll, we'll you know we want to be back in the stores as soon as it's safe to do so. And uh, yeah. February uh, we've talked about will be our 13 year anniversary uh, so, as well. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long road, Brandon. And we're still 100% made in Canada. Yeah. So everything we do is made in North America, yeah. aside from the MIJ collection, which is made in Japan. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we keep everything made locally, and uh, and, so we, and we're still continuing that. Of yeah, course. exactly. You know, we, just we just a few floors down, we're making a, a whole bunch of jeans. Yeah, we're on the fifth yeah. floor now. We make stuff on the second floor. Yeah. And uh, you can buy things on the first floor. No, like, uh, exactly. It, it can go from factory floor to, to retail store in one place. Come to Tatian Yoko, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, uh, Brandon, thanks so much for uh, taking some time to sit down with me and, and, and you know, talk with the fans and let people know thanks, your thoughts Ed. and all that stuff. And Safe travels back to Japan. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you guys very soon. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone. Peace.